The scheme to have Trump's company pay for personal stuff for Trump Organization executives, as described in the indictment, as a scheme. So not only do those executives not have to pay for those things out of pocket, they would thereby dodge taxes on that, both from the company side and the employee side. Right? The indictment says that that scheme was not limited to Alan Weisselberg and his family members who are compensated in that way. They describe um, other people who work for the Trump Organization who benefited from this allegedly illegal tax evasion scheme. Similarly, the indictment says there were other Trump Organization executives who worked for the company, but they were regularly paid in ways that were designed to disguise their payment from tax authorities. They were regularly paid in ways to make it look like they weren't getting compensated as Trump Organization employees. They were getting paid as consultants or something. It has important tax consequences, both for the company and for the executive getting paid that way. That's all spelled out in the indictment. It's spelled out in the indictment as a further part of the scheme to defraud. No other executives behind, besides Alan Weiselberg is described as the beneficiaries of that fraud, but it is explicitly spelled out that he wasn't the only one who benefited from that kind of a scheme. I will also tell you that is exactly the kind of scheme described by New York Times reporters in September in their Pulitzer Prize winning expose of Trump's financial adventures. They specifically described a scheme like that, a scheme like the one outlined in today's indictment as it related to Ivanka Trump, the president's daughter. The Times described in d detail financial records they discovered that showed Ivanka Trump being paid both as an employee of the Trump Organization and as a consultant to the Trump Organization in a way that seemed custom designed to try to evade taxes, both for the company and for her. That is the executive scheme described at the end of the indictment. Prosecutors say that Weisselberg benefited from such a scheme and that other executives did too. They are not named in this indictment. But that is the Ivanka scheme described last fall in the New York Times. And like I said, apparently there's more to come from this investigation. We've got much more on that in a second. One of the things that caught my eye is your reporting from last fall um, about a, a scheme that you uncovered, basically, by comparing different financial documents, um, which showed that the president's daughter, Ivanka Trump, was paid as a consultant in a way that seemed designed to avoid paying taxes on some of her income, a way that would have been advantageous both to her and also to the Trump organization. I wondered if you saw any reflections of that scheme that you described, particularly in those later parts of the indictment where they described ongoing schemes involving multiple executives um, around the way their their compensation was was described to authorities you know it, it sure did feel of a piece to me what we saw um when we were doing our work with the payments um some of which um went to ivanka trump you know you're seeing money that's coming out and being allocated um you know alan weiselberg had some of that through through a certain payment and with with ivanka trump what we saw and, and it's others are involved as well there was $26 million that we found um, in consulting fees that were being paid from entities that Donald Trump controls outward. We couldn't see who they were who they were going to, but we saw them going out and it was like, wow, when we saw it, we were like, where were these going? And then what we found as we went along was we were comparing the taxes to other documents. We had um, public documents and other documents. But we saw some of it actually went to a company that is controlled by um, is, or Ivanka Trump is an officer of and then paid out to Ivanka Trump. And why that was a red flag is because she's got, um, she's an officer of the Trump organization and has, she's paid more than $2 million and she's also getting consulting fees. And that's sort of something that right away should be, you know, the IRS would be looking at it and saying, hey, they're, they're only supposed to, these sort of payments should be ordinary and necessary and the, you have to question why somebody who's making two million dollars at the trump organization is also getting consulting fees so you're sort of like what's going on and and what you know we in our reporting suspected and we reported about was that this was an attempt by donald trump to reduce his taxable income and to transfer money to his kids that may also have had the effect of reducing 
um, or of him voiding the uh, a gift tax to them. So it's, it's a way to transfer wealth potentially from one generation to another. We didn't have access to other people's um, tax information to see if potentially Eric Trump was getting some of these payments, if Donald Trump Jr. was getting some of these payments, but they are also a member uh, and, and are part of that company that was getting the money that went to Ivanka. And, and briefly to that point, the kinds of documents that would show that, if that's the case, is it your understanding uh, from what we can see publicly about this court case, that those are the kinds of documents that the prosecutors have? I think I can't imagine that they don't have them by now. And, and the, uh, the New York attorney general had gone after the information from the company that received those payments called TTT, um, you know, for Trump, Trump, Trump. So um, <laughs> they, they've got those records. And I, I don't know how much other, further they've gotten, if they've gotten um, tax returns of other members of the Trump family. But that's a real just follow the money case. We were like, wow, when we saw it and we you know, started to work through it, we dead ended in the tax returns. But then because Ivanka Trump had gone to the administration, she had financial filings and we were able to uh, to match them up. I, I got I, you know, I have worked with two uh, two great reporters on it, Russ Butner and Mike McIntyre, and it was a great, great effort. Um, it took us a long time to, to put all that together, but it's there. And it's one of the things that uh, the Manhattan VA is looking at. I mean, one of the, I think, the important threads to pull from that Pulitzer Prize winning reporting at The New York Times based on Trump uh, financial records um, is that, among others, it appears that Ivanka Trump benefited from the type of scheme that's described at the end of the indictment today, um, that Trump executives were compensated in ways that were deliberately designed to help them evade taxes and to help the business evade taxes on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Alan Weiselberg is being charged for benefiting from that scheme. The indictment says other executives also benefited from that scheme. And now we've got solid reporting that the investigation continues. That raises the prospect that further charges could be brought against his children. Yeah, it does. And I, again, I think they should be quite uh, anxious right now. Donald, on the other hand, will expect the same kind and level of loyalty from them as he expects from Alan. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as far as Donald's concerned, they have what they have because of him. And they should be willing to take whatever hit they're going to take. Um, he doesn't understand, I guess, how these things work. Uh, prosecutors won't stop at my cousins. They will be going uh, for the bigger fish, which would be Donald, uh, who's been running this organization for over 30 years now. So um, I think he would be surprised uh, to learn that I don't believe my cousins would exert that kind of exercise, that kind of loyalty towards him because his hmm. relationship with them and their relationship with him is entirely transactional. So um, and conditional, I should say. So they're not going to risk anything for him just as he wouldn't risk anything for them. So it could get really, really interesting as these things unfold, because there are so many more documents that uh, New York prosecutors have at their disposal. So you have more confidence that Alan Weisselberg would, wouldn't cooperate than you do that the president's, former president's children wouldn't cooperate. Yeah, I think um, as far as I understand it, and you know, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, it seems that as, as serious as these charges are, they may not end up with uh, jail time or, or any significant amount of jail time. And the downside of um, cooperating with prosecutors for Alan Weisselberg might be larger than the downside of going to jail uh, if it's for a short enough period of time. So again, it's going to be very interesting to see just um, the, the case that can be made and the uh, sentencing if it comes to that, uh, because I think that will factor in for sure. But um, I'm much less sanguine about uh, my cousin's loyalty to their father.